They have the World Series odds for all 30 teams going into spring training, and I realize a lot still could change. And the Rangers are not high on that list. Right now they're 50 to 1 to win the World Series, which is actually a tiny bit lower than I would have guessed. But that's 10th in the American League. So when you hear people saying they better make the playoffs, they better I get there's a difference between I want them to make the playoffs and they better make the playoffs. So when you hear people say they're they better make the playoffs, they're listed as the 10th favorite in the American League to win the World Series. Mike, when we we discuss our our number and it, we got them just above 500. It's kind of in that in that range and you really like this is an upside thing. It looks good. Does that if they're let's say they win 84 games, All right? Is that a everything went perfect for them, or you're putting in place because that's for me, I'm putting in place a couple things went wrong and not everybody played up to, but they were really good for this year. But it's not everything went perfect. If everything was to go perfect, Kevin, they're making the playoffs with the pitching sure. rotation. Sure, sure. And that means Nathaniel Lowe hit 300 again. Marcus Simeon was good all season. Seager turned back into the superstar that they he's were, supposed to be. They were hot at the same time. Yeah, all sometimes. those things yeah. go perfectly. But when I look at this and I'm putting them in that range, I'm saying we have enough talent good enough coaching to be right there in the mix, but we still are missing a couple pieces. Yeah. So I know you gave a lot there. Are you saying that I think if everything goes right, I mean, all your answers are yes, you win 90 games. It's tough to win 90 games. It is tough. And so I think if they win 84, most of your answers were yes. Because I believe – you might have this, Kevin, on your email, but I believe the Rangers over under is 79 and a half yes. in Vegas. So, yes. I mean, picking 84 wins is picking well over yeah. their win total. If they win 80 games, if, if you do think they're going to go over 500, it is a good bet right now in Vegas because right now their over under is under 500. Uh, so, I, I will be disappointed if they play under 500 it's, baseball and i see i have seen in some spots it's bounced up a couple okay. and so some people have it at 81 and a half or okay. like essentially just about at 500 which yeah. which feels right to me if you get to 500 that's a 12 game improvement mm -hmm. and if you get up to like you said Corey, 84 then that's a 15 game improvement which but is crazy it is but you sh you know what when you add that much you should season, yeah. you should be up there and, and you retain M martin Perez. Perez. You did. You know, that's that's something that, like, when you lose something in ad, then you're like, oh, okay, hold on. But when you keep things in ad, that's even, you should be better. I think the thing that gets me, I don't know if carried away is the right word or not, because it's not the results. Like, we saw the Rangers win. We've seen the Rangers pile up some spring training wins. But that's not what's got me caught up. It's talking with Bruce Bochy. It's talking with Josh Young. It's talking with Taylor Hearn. It's... I, and we've we've talked with you know Tony Beasley, and we've talked with so many people in that clubhouse, and it just feels different. And I get the logical counterpoint is an injury can change that really quick, and I am not here to argue against that. But just the way everyone talks, the way everyone is acting, the hype level feels different for them, and makes me wonder if they can surpass that 500 by a good handful of games. They believe they can. And that's the first time, you know, without, you know, giving away things. I mean, they even knew the Rangers kind of knew the last few years that playing 500 foot, playing 500 baseball would be really tough to do. So I think this one, they would be disappointed. The players, the coaches, the front office, the ownership, they would be disappointed if this team isn't competing for a playoff spot. I don't want to say they'll be, oh, my gosh, what a bad year. If, if they go 84 and 78, I think this front office will go, all right, can we go get Juan Soto? Can we go yeah. get Shohei Otani? Not both of them because that would cost you maybe $100 million in a year. Uh, and they would spend a billion dollars on two players. If they did that, then I'm like, oh my god! If they went and got after this year Juan Soto and Shohei Otani for approximately, then you a better win. Dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think right now I'm looking at this team going. They expect to play over 500. They expect to compete for a playoff spot, and it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility to make the playoffs. But I do think you have to. I think we're doing a good job here of maybe temper your expectations because. This is a good team, but to get to 90 wins, that would be a huge jump. And you're talking about Jonah Heim, Josh Young, 
Leody Tavares. I mean, you're talking about maybe those three guys providing a lot of offense at the back end of your lineup. Yeah, man. The uh, I with the amount of money they spent, I think the uh, people look at the team and go, "Well, I mean, just magically, it should be you should be contending." I and, and you do get that, right? I totally do, and and I hope that Ray Davis understands like Chris Young was giving him the hey look you know we're still we're doing this this is going to make us better uh this is going to put us in during the regular season fans are going to want to show up to the stadium because we're playing winning baseball we're playing a brand of baseball that you want to see day in and day out like I think that is going to be something because Kevin Mike you know you saw the stadium last year by mid-season it was like all right, that's that's pretty much it for this. Yeah. And then you and then you fire your coach, and then everything kind of continues to fall off there. So I think whenever you're talking, we were talking to Hearn this morning. Yes. And he's and as he was talking about the starting pitching, uh, Mike as a as a relief pitcher, you're thinking, man, we have a chance today to go out there and maybe only have two innings to, to pitch, uh, maybe three innings max, because this dude's going to give a, set the table for us to really do something that's high leverage for us and high pressure. And we get this opportunity to go get a win, but maybe also your lineup puts the runs on the boards for you, and you, you're going out there and just getting the win for the team. And, but as the bullpen, you're not sitting there going, man, we're going to have to carry this thing from inning four all the way through. Yeah, and I think that <laughs> talking to guys in the clubhouse and you know not naming names, they were like, we got wore out. You, you get to August and you're a bullpen guy and your yeah. starters are – consistently pitching less than five innings. Now, obviously, Martin Perez was awesome last yeah. year. John Gray was solid when, when he, he wasn't pitched. Hurt, it, just, yeah. it just stunk that he would keep kind of getting on the injury list. By the way, we should be talking to John Gray in about 30 minutes. Nice. Okay, great. So in approximately 30 minutes, you know, give or take. Obviously, yeah. he has to get off the field and get up here and everything. But we'll be talking to John Gray here pretty soon is that the bullpen needs to not be worn out when you get to August and September. And the other thing, too, is – this team, if they're going to win 80-plus games and get to that 90 mark, somebody has to establish themselves as the closer that we're not worried about. You cannot have three different closers in a season. I know what Taylor Hearn said. And he's like, well, you weren't watching. Well, I understand there were guys that stepped up and had great years. Brock Burke had a great year, and he's back. Obviously, Matt Moore had a great year. He's not back. But they had to go through Barlow. No, not the answer. Jonathan Hernandez, maybe not ready yet because of coming back from injury. Jose LeClerc, uh, you know, he's struggling with it. Who else can we use? Can Matt Moore jump in as a closer every once in a while because maybe the matchup suits our team better tonight? There has to be an established closer. When you think of all the teams last year that had great years, most of those teams had an established closer. When they got to the ninth inning, they had a guy that they knew was going to get those three outs for them. And right now, they're, we don't know. We don't know who's going to get the final three outs to close out these games. Now, I don't, I don't, th it's not going to be this guy, but when you're talking about people stepping up, I know it's in a different pitching role, but I, I, I saw this article and I thought it was interesting is who's going to be the breakout player for the Texas Rangers or excuse me, let me try that again. Somebody who can make a surprise impact as well. And CBS sports went with. Glenn Otto. Now, I'm not suggesting that Glenn Otto would be the closer or anything, right. but when we talk about injuries, Glenn Otto is somebody that maybe you think of as, could he step into that role and be better than you think? Or could he be a stabilizing force for the bullpen? And CBS Sports pointed out that they did also pick Glenn Otto last year, so take that for what, what you will. What are y'all doing, CBS take Sports? Take that for what you will. Mike, for me, the like the, the pet cat, I guess, that I'm hoping for is, and I know you were all about him three years ago, and I might be all about him right now is I hope Jackson and Clint Frazier is like can can be what we were hoping as you said the fully realized uh yeah. like Miles that Turner me, that 450 foot bomb <laughs> he it, 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 it got ball. me dude he he reached out and just slugged that thing so like the second the bat hit it you were like okay yeah, well as, as and that's kind of where I am Mike is I we need to figure left field out I don't I'm not completely comfortable with center field yet. They both of those guys still have some things to prove, but that's where that's one of those spots. If they were say, you know, hey, we're going to go with Bubba and Leody in the outfield, you have a pretty good defensive outfield out there and you can steal some bases. But if Frazier can be what we kind of thought he might be and he gets that opportunity, 
I don't know if he's even going to make this team, but he's one of those guys that I'm kind of like pulling for. I don't think he will out of spring training. I think he will start the year in AAA, but he can have an Because there are some impact. things kind of in his way with like, like the contract yeah. for Grossman yeah. and stuff. That really messed a few – that really blocked a few people's potential. My breakout for the Rangers that I'm really hoping – I don't have tons of confidence, but I'm going to go with this one if I have to – instead of Glenn Otto, because I th- do think it's tough. He's going to be a middle reliever yeah. most likely, and it's tough to be like, man, what a great middle reliever you- we have. But you do see the potential in case start, things yes. went poorly. Is Leody Tavares. Okay. He is going to be your opening day center fielder. He is going to be batting ninth. And I know, hey, you don't get as many at-bats batting ninth. But if you can get on base 35% of the time, you have Simeon and Seeger right behind you to knock you in. And so for me, I believe that he's a very good defensive outfielder. And if he can get on base and consistently get on base – he can have a major impact on this team batting ninth. I know that sounds weird, but I would bat him ninth because of his speed, and if he can get on first base and figure out a way how to get to second base, I think he can score 100 runs for this team this year. I do too because Simeon, you're, you talk about Simeon, he's putting line drives into the outfield, and that like that's yeah. where you get up on base and you steal second or find your way over. You're right, Mike. One of those two guys is going to be able to get you in, get you in for sure.